happy. You're like, oh, you failed. I didn't fail. This is how it is. You know, it's fine. But um, I hate that that's the notion that that it's fit like because they. I think a lot of people re- revolve life and success based on are you married or are you yeah married? yeah just, in our region. I I don't like that. Like it's bullshit that because it bothers you put me. Put a lot of pressure on the people, and they have to prove to the people that they're successful. Yeah, this is not success. It's got nothing to do with success. Absolutely not. But it just it's kind of it's not the best atmosphere. You know when when you want to leave and you can't because of the kids. I don't think it's fair for you. And I'm not saying it's a selfish thing, even though a lot of people would say, you know, you have to be selfish. Yeah, you do. But it's not about only selfish. It's not right. Welcome to today's episode sponsored by Delta Fitness. For me, there's nothing as important as a good workout. It actually has a direct effect on the quality of the work I produce on this podcast, which makes me super excited to announce my new partnership with Delta Fitness, a leading distributor, retailer, and service provider in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Bismillah rahman rahim Welcome to the Mo Show podcast. Very excited about this episode. We have uh, Yasmin Gahtani. Yasmin Al Gahtani is a rock climber who manages the Rock Climbing Federation under the Ministry of Sports here in Saudi Arabia. She is a mother of two twin boys. For me, that's like already too much on my plate. I mean, to have two kids and to manage a federation under the sports, you probably do a lot more than that. We're, we're going to get into it. She has a degree in computer programming that then took a wicked redirection to sports specifically or even rock climbing. Welcome to the show, Yasmin. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it's uh, it's my pleasure. How are you doing? I'm very excited to be here, actually. Me too. Me too. I met you once uh, about a year ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then, I mean, we, we were talking and then you told me that you're big into rock climbing. And, uh, and I was like, wow, you know, we actually have a community of rock climbers in Saudi. I know we have some of the most incredible mountain ranges. But I never thought that, you know, we have people as avid as you that go out pretty much every other weekend. Um, and um, it's something that uh, that really inspires me and interests me. And maybe one day we can go out there. I want you to try. Actually, a lot of people will never understand what rock climbing is until they experience it. Okay. Such an amazing what experience. Is it? How do you uh, pitch me if we were in an elevator together? So you first have to know what rock climbing is because a lot of people, they kind of think rock climbing is mountain climbing, but it's so different. So rock climbing is actually using your fingertips, Mm -hmm. your toes to climb a face of a mountain. Yeah, with a rope, with a rope. I'm already sweating. (laughs) With a rope, I I do. My my type is is sport climbing. It's called lead climbing or bouldering. So bouldering is really short. It's safer and uh, it doesn't require any rope, but I like the ropes. So the one with the rope, do you have someone on the top who has a rope harnessed around him? Or is it the one where someone is standing on the bottom with you? So basically it's on the bottom, it's, yes. It's on the bottom. We call him a belayer or her a belayer. Okay. So climbing is actually um, a partnership with two people. There's a climber and there's a belayer. And then you exchange. So someone climbs, someone belays, and then the person goes back down and then you climb again. You know, the other person climbs again. That's usually, you know, the best scenario mm-hmm. and a good partnership. Uh, yeah, so you kind of, you feel safe if you have a good layer. <laughs> Any moments out there where you didn't feel safe? Okay, so I've climbed a lot. So clearly, uh, I mean, in the end, sport, you know, uh, rock climbing is an extreme sport. So it does have its danger, mm-hmm. let's say. It's still pretty safe. I mean, I feel... Driving a car is less safe than climbing. Um, Especially around here. <laughs> definitely. I think anywhere. <laughs> uh, but with rock climbing, uh, because I climbed in many places. So yeah, you, you experience different uh, situations. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was a time when I felt, I cried on the wall. But I was alone. I felt, I cried, no one saw me. And I, in that second, I was like, what are you doing? You could have been that person who just stays in, in our living room on a couch watching TV. 
you would have been perfectly happy, you know? Then I'm like, no, I'm not happy. <laughs> I prefer this. Even if I'm going to die, I prefer dying while climbing. But yeah, it, it happened to me. Um, what was the, can you describe the incident? So, um, so as you said, you mentioned that climbing requires two people. And uh, this was a bit different type of climbing, which is a bit of a higher mountain, higher face. So it's called multi-pitch. So we, we kind of break down the climb into segments and we alternate when we climb. So someone holds the rope, the person climbs, and then while the person's on the top, the lower person goes, climbs up. So it ha you can do that. So we continue up. And then I w it was in Italy, by the way. And uh, there was a, an area, a segment where I didn't see the person that was climbing and I was belaying him. And we always had some kind of communication where I, I would, you know, he would tell me, you know, he's, he's locked or he's connected or he's on, you know, off belay, we call it, or, you know, like he's already in the anchor and it's ready for me to climb. Now, what happened is that part, I couldn't hear him. And I waited for like 20 minutes and usually 20 minutes is a, is a long time, you know, for climbing. So I was, you know, belaying him and then did he reach? Did he not reach? And I was calling his name. I was calling, shouting and everything. And we were already like 150 meters high. So that's considered really you high. You can't see the other person. I couldn't see him. I couldn't hear him. And I was like, okay, what do we do? Because there is a few seconds where he is not like he is connecting. There's the connecting part, you know, and ready for me to climb. So there's that second where I have to be very, I have to be holding the rope while he does that. But then I didn't know anything about him. So I was like, what should I do? Should I just stay there? So I started waiting and waiting and it was like around 40 minutes. And I was like, okay, we're stuck in the middle of, you know, a face of a mountain. There's no one. It's only me and him. You know, a strange country, and we can't stay like that forever. Either we're going to die from, you know, just staying like that for a few days until he's dead, or I have to make a move. So I did make a move. I decided, you know what, just do it. Try to go. If he's ready, he's ready. He's not ready for me to climb. And it turned out that he's, I'm not connected to him. And if I fall, I die because the rope is not really connected. It is what it is, you know. Oh yes. And I actually climbed and I was trying to be careful not to fall, but then something really bad happened and it started raining. At that second, it decided to rain. Is that the enemy of climbing? Uh, yeah, when the, when the wall gets slippery mm -hmm. and you can't hold on to anything and it becomes like soap. Yeah, and that that's was... when I'm like, start crying. Like I knew I was gonna fall and I start climbing just crying and I was like, that's when the moment came and I was like, I should have stayed home maybe. But then I realized that's not me. I'm a climber and it's okay. You know, I know what I'm putting myself into and it's okay. I'll try my best. If I do fall, at least I fall and die a happy person. And of course I didn't fall. <laughs> And so I'm here, but I'm happy. Uh, you know, no one wants to. No one wants to die. Clearly, no one wants to die. But we always say, you know, uh, death is gonna happen. Death is gonna come. At least we do something we love. Yeah, gave me goosebumps. But again, climbing is still safe, as safe as it can be. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it doesn't <laughs> rain. Um, alhamdulillah. I mean, I mean, for you, that's probably like a, like a near death experience. And I'm just lo looking at my notes, and, and you know, one of the points here was what is the ha hardest climb you've ever done, uh, slash scariest moment you've ever had out there, uh, and that's most probably it. Uh, yeah. So hardest climb. I don't really look at climbs uh, trying to hunt the hardest climb or try to achieve that. That's not my scope. I prefer um, climbing things that kind of stimulate a lot of things in me. You know, the fear, the the anger, the joy, the happiness, you know, all of these emotions to come out. And sometimes, because climbing is not only physical, it's a lot of mental, a lot of mental. And if you're not in the right state, if anything just triggered something, you won't perform well. So for me, climbing, it's the actual climb. Sometimes it plays around with your brain 
that makes it such a difficult climb when it could have been easier if you are in a different state. Okay. So, I mean, I was just about to ask that if you had a bad day or a bad week, you wouldn't advise that person to go out to climb. Well, it depends. I mean, I sometimes go because it is a release. Okay. It's my happy place. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, again, it triggers so many emotions and sometimes triggering so many emotions at the same time, it's like a roller coaster. You inject yourself with, you know, a booster. <laughs> of, exactly. <laughs> uh, but not only that, everything, you know, I'm telling you, even fear, you feel that, but then you feel good after that, you know, because you went through it and you realized, hey, I'm still, yeah. I'm good. Concrete. Yeah, I'm, 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 I have so much energy. <sighs> I have, I, I, it just stimulates something. So you feel alive. So yeah, sometimes it's good to go out when you're not in the right state. And sometimes, you need to be in in the best yeah. state. I guess knowing yourself, you know, you got to know, yeah. you know if if climbing is going to serve you right now or exactly. not. Exactly. When did you start? I started, of course, a few years back, but I started after an incident, which is divorce. That's when you started. Yes. Yes. Um, so usually after divorce, um, you know, uh, it's it's a life changing experience. Um, even though I feel not only divorce should be a life-changing experience, any ending of any kind of relationship could be um, a partnership, could Mm -hmm. be friendship, could be, uh, you know, um, a long-term relationship, you know, doesn't necessarily have to be a marriage, but it was a divorce that, that made me want to be, to do something different, Uh, something I've never tried before and something that is very challenging. Um, Also, because it was something not too popular, I think that I felt something that was more me. That is my my time, and I don't need to see people that I am seeing every day. So that was something that kind of encouraged me to explore a lot of sports. And I did. I explored a lot of sports, and I failed in a lot of sports until I, uh, I got introduced to rock climbing and the moment I tried it, it was scary. I thought people wanted to kill me. <laughs> but uh, but then when I when I I was done, I, I became a different person. I realized this is it. I am the happiest person alive and you found your thing. I found I found who I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what's really cool about it is I don't think there are two ways that are the same to get up. I, I know nothing about climbing, but mm. the whole circumnavigating your way up, should I go through that rock? No, that might not work. Let me go through here. That's pretty, the whole routing or the mapping out. Yeah, we call it visualization. Visualization. So you kind of, every person is different. Every person climbs differently. I'm a short person. I'm very short. And we always say short people climb and tall people just reach (laughs) so it's different they their style is very different than a short person's style and also it depends on your flexibility it depends on what you're comfortable with and how much strength because really climbing is for everyone i mean it doesn't it's not necessarily for a certain body type it's literally for everyone so it depends on how you see it and how you believe in yourself you can do it you just need to think you know and that's why it's very it's it has a lot of strategy around it also and how when you climb you want to you don't want to get tired on the climb cuz it looks easy trust me it's not so you want to kind of figure out where are your relax you know like your rest spots they're not rest but kind of rest restish <laughs> restish like you can like oh okay i can breathe a bit <laughs> but no i mean uh it's it's more being tactical you know like a tactic move and what's right and what's wrong and sometimes one wrong move for you will just ruin everything you know so and and, it's climb you know some people stay on one climb for years two three years they don't finish it as efficient as possible until they get it you know i think it also requires a lot of concentration right yeah if you lose your concentration that's yeah 100 percent. but but it's it's about concentrating on controlling your how your brain is talking to you that's what you need to so medit so for us it's more medit meditation 
it makes you kind of zone out from everything you don't hear anyone or anything and you're really focusing on what your brain is telling you and try to concentrate on being as relaxed as possible mm -hmm. fascinating yeah. I'm, I'm encouraged <laughs> <laughs> uh switching gears ministry of sports i love that they gave you the position of uh the representative of rock climbing in saudi arabia what's the experience been like working with them and what do you do there so I'm managing the federation, which is, you know, it's a, it's a government entity for, for the sport. Almost every sport has its own federation to govern it, to uh, support, develop. So this is what I do. And rock climbing is a new sport. The federation only started three years ago, and I, I worked with them since it was established. Um, it's very interesting to work in 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 the ministry of sports uh under them and it's it's really a learning place it's not easy <laughs> it's very difficult it's uh it's a lot of responsibility and you're you're working with different entities so we're not talking only about a ministry which they give us a lot of support you know we're under them so they're supporting us 100 percent um but then there are people that you want to please too. But you're kind of, you know, you're like the police. <laughs> so it's always like difficult, you know, to give to the people what you want because you also have to be governing and you also have to control it. So it's not the, the smoothest job ever. You know, we're working with international federation. We're working with local people. We're working with people who have dreams and they want things to happen so quick. And we all want things to happen so quick. But in the end, there are also other entities, Ministry of Sports, Ministry of Tourism, uh, Vision 2030. We all have to work together and everyone has their own agenda. So we kind of have to be aligned with everyone so it's not easy to communicate with everyone it, it, it's time. not easy to communicate with one person and get two people to agree on exactly. something let alone a body you know or, yeah. a, or or a federation yeah so i can't even imagine how difficult your job is but it's it's the best job i ever had in my life like i'm really? so Honestly, grateful huh? yes i'm so grateful with all its ups and downs, it's uh, it's exhausting. Uh, I can't, I, no matter how much I tell you, a lot of people are like, oh my God, you're so lucky you're working in what you love doing. Yes, of course. But again, it's still a lot of office work. It's a lot of traveling. I'm, I'm still a mother, you know? And I travel in one week, two to three times. <laughs> On a plane? On a plane. A week? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> wow. Um, so ministry is in Riyadh. I am in Jeddah. And the sport is everywhere around Saudi. Okay. So you can imagine. Um, is the majority of the climbing down south in the Abha Tanoma region? Now, I, I'm not going to say yes. It, it, maybe if you asked me a few months ago, I would say definitely climbing spot mm -hmm. is o mostly in the south. But of course, we've developed in multiple places we've developed in Riyadh in around around Jeddah which is Taif area there is a really nice crack there we call it crack so a spot where it's for climbing it's called a crag um and then in the south definitely it's like heaven you know world class beautiful but now we're actually introducing a new place next week in Neom all right and it's going to be the largest in saudi arabia fantastic and it's different and every area in saudi arabia this is what's so interesting about climbing in saudi arabia than any other country is that usually in, in one country uh, usually they have the same terrain so when you go let's say to spain it's all the same rock type it's all the same style it's just you're going different routes or different locations but in saudi literally every spot yeah. is so different yeah, yeah. And Al Neom is is phenomenal. Is it closer to how Al Ula looks with these? It looks like yes. like a, yes. It's closer to that. Yes, it's closer. Al Ula unfortunately looks beautiful, but it's not climbable. It's not climbable. No, it's dangerous. what is that rock? It looks like Mars. Is that that it's red? Sand, it's sandstone. Okay, it's sandstone, but it's gorgeous, like though. It looks I know, beautiful. I know. It's it's very deceiving. 
it's a teaser for us where it looked like it, it was like it looks oh my like God. the most incredible thing to climb and then you touch it and it becomes powder and you're like yeah mm, okay i'm staying on the ground <laughs> see that movie 143 minutes yes by J james franco it was 127 or something like yeah, that 127. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's the that. same rock formation same in neom okay 100%. all right that, i think that was like utah arizona that red rock yes red so rock. neom is close to that kind of terrain yes, yes how interesting and it's beautiful it's really really like magical i gotta visit i feel like neom's gonna have like that whole daredevil side to it where adrenaline junkies are going to flock to. Oh, 100%. Base jumpers are already there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Climbers are already there. And hopefully you're going to hear some great news about sports in general mm. in Neom. It's, it's going to happen. And it's something like I just found out yesterday. And I'm like, oh, this is amazing. Well, thanks for sharing that. That's, <laughs> That's amazing. all I can tell you. <laughs> gave, us, gave us a scoop. We'll try to get some more out of you throughout this uh, podcast. Uh, whoop. <laughs> um, so we we touched on uh, obviously what you've done uh, in in the climbing world and mm -hmm. and it's a lot and your work with the ministry of sports i want people to get a chance to get to know you yes me on a personal level how do you explain yourself in one line not that you should explain yourself to anyone how would you describe yourself in a line or two i am very complicated let's say um i feel like i have different personas within me so um, I could be the fun person I could be the very serious person I could be the mother which a lot of people in the climbing community call me the mother just because I like to take care of everyone um, and I can be you know the co I'm just everything so I'm very complicated very emotional very emotional uh, to the extent like you can call me crazy <laughs> no but uh, so I have that but also very strong and it depends on the so yeah complicated I'm very complicated yet simple I don't know how that works but but I don't know how I understood that <laughs> <laughs> I think life requires us to wear a bunch of hats <laughs> yeah you, I mean you can't not it isn't a uh, one hat fits all Exactly. I have a corporate hat. I have a podcast hat. I have a Baba, father, father hat. I have a husband hat. I have a hat that I wear when I'm around my friends. So there are horses for courses. Yeah, I think it's it's okay. You know, like I think the older we grow and the more experience we we go through, we realize this is just all part of life, and we need to be more diplomatic about it for ourselves. So we need to, we need to be in that situation in that way. But at the same time, at the same time, you know, it could be in that instant, I have to be somewhere or something else. Um, yeah, so maybe someone from the outside can say, oh my God, what's wrong with this person? You know, like I, I can't figure that person out. It just, you know, it's part of the adventure of getting to know you soon. <laughs> what kind of relationship did you have with your parents? Were you closer to one over the other? Okay, um, so my relationship with my parents is very, I would say, different. Uh, I hope my parents don't listen to this. <laughs> um, I'll be sure to send them a link. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so my parents, when I grew up, I, I wasn't that close to them. I was, um, I love to live in my own bubble, okay? Uh, maybe because I used to see them, you know, as parents. You know, there has to be... Um, some kind of limit between us. Uh, and maybe because my parents job as being diplomats, they kind of did not encourage that I, you know, be very close to them. So as, as a young person, I only saw them as parents, not as friends, um, but it's okay. You know, that's how we were and it's fine. But I would say, who was I closer to? my mom me being a girl wanted you know to to talk to someone so it would be my mom but when i got older and my dad got older i think when both of us got older i realized i'm way much closer to my dad than my mom i became closer i i saw my dad in a different eye from a different eye i saw him not the person that i i i kind of 
wanted to see him. So I saw him as the father, the strong, the, oh, I don't want to make him upset. Or I, I shouldn't talk to him like that because I'm only a child, you know. You know, he's not going to take me seriously. But then I realized, oh, my God, he's so emotional. You know, oh, I just want to hug him and, you know, like, oh, everything is going to be okay kind of thing. You know, he's, he's very, he, the older they get, the more vulnerable they become. But then also the more open they become and the more, um, they express themselves more. Yeah. And I realized, you know, oh, you know, we're, we're very close now. How about childhood? What was your childhood like, if you were to sum it up? Mm, again, I was a daughter of diplomats. So, um, we were going to a lot of formal events, let's say. Everything was formal. Everything. My, my life was formal. Um, my parents' life was formal. So it was interesting. I was always with older people. <laughs> to grow up quick, probably. Uh, yeah, I, I have an older brother anyway, because it's me and my brother. So I was always with him. I don't have younger siblings. Uh, so he was my closest friend. Yeah, so I grew up quickly because of that. How has your life changed for either the better, which I hope it did and I trust it did, uh, or for the worse, which I hope it did not? How has your life changed since the divorce? Um, I could say... I'm a different person, 100%. I'm, I'm a 100% different person to the best, to the better. And I might change more later. But I, I, I kind of say also before marriage, the marriage also changed me. You know, like it's just different chapters of life. And I don't like to see as, oh, because I got divorced or because there was a divorce, that means it has to be something negative after or like oh how did it change you know it 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 happens you know and again i yes divorce is huge it is a life-changing thing yes but also i see friendship you know we should also put all these different relationships in the same category by the way friendship is still as important as marriage you know uh having a relationship with a with a family member like a parent or something you don't have that is huge too, you know, um, any relationship is huge. So I think we change throughout life, not only because of a divorce, but even not being a friend of someone, you know, to someone or not, or a breakup, a regular relationship breakup, that's all still huge and Changes it should change it. Yeah, so I changed a lot during, after the divorce and even after, you know, yeah. throughout the time yeah. also. So I just, and it's not like change, it's more evolve. It's a good way to look at it. So yeah, I'm evolving and probably will evolve, you know, hopefully. Yeah, I bet. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's just part of growing as a human. And that's when they say a person becomes wise when you're older. It's not because of your age, but because of the experiences. You totally. You strike me as a person that doesn't want to stop learning. Oh no. That will always immerse themselves in any situation, you know, just to get the experience. 100%, and I'm always gonna see myself as really young. So I'm probably gonna be one of those people who are was like maybe 95 years old and still act like I'm 25. Yeah. And still wear like I'm a 25 year old <laughs> person. Um, yeah, so. Something that doesn't make sense to me is people, and this is just my opinion, is people who stay together for the sake of the kids. There's a lot of yeah. circumstances where that's the case. Unfortunately, yes. Um, okay, I had kids. So I my issues actually happened in the process of having the kids, you know, like, um, so it's not like after having the kids, but it was in the process. But I decided to stay. I decided to fight for it. I'm not telling you, you know, I'm, I, we don't need to talk about the details, but I decided no, I wanted to be that person, you know, fight for it, for the kids, not even for the kids. I think I wasn't even ready to leave, you know, I was like still, no, no, no. Um, I was scared, scared to be on my own, you know, after, you know, a long time of marriage. And I was, I was worried, you know, like it's, and especially how people see you like, oh, you failed. I didn't fail. This is how it is, you know, it's fine. But um, I hate that that's the notion that, that it's fit like, 
because they it's, i think a lot of people re revolve life and success based on are you married or are you yeah, married? yeah in is, our region i i don't like that like it's bullshit that because it, you put me. a lot of pressure on the people and they have to prove to the people that they're successful yeah. this is not success it's got nothing to do with success absolutely not but it just it's kind of it's not the best atmosphere you know when when you want to leave and you can't because of the kids i don't think it's fair for you and i'm not saying it's a selfish thing even though a lot of people would say you know you have to be selfish yeah you do but it's not about only selfish it's not right it's just not right to do something i don't think it's it's healthy or right for your own body and your own health because health is not it's not you're not serving your health either i don't think it's right for the kids you might say but i'm doing it for the kids not really because in my opinion i feel the kids they don't want to feel guilty when they grow up saying oh they just stayed because of me they will feel guilty you might say oh but they will you know say oh because of me they got divorced no they'll get over it once they get older they'll understand and everything they'll get over it but to i think understand that their mother or their father stayed in the marriage because of it, they'll always feel guilty they won't be happy you know they feel that they created unhappiness for two people or one person. And I don't think any person wants to go through that. Number two, I think it's so wrong because you're giving the wrong example to the kids that this is what marriage is about, being unhappy, which shouldn't be. It's not the right message. No. So I think kids will appreciate, I hope, you know, but thankfully, like I talk to my kids a lot and I, I Ask them, are you happy that this happened? Are you okay with it? You know, express. And I think they respect the fact that a person can say, no, this is not good for me anymore and it's time to move on. Because I'm teaching them that they shouldn't accept something that's not good for them, you know? It's okay, you know? And again, it's not about failure. It's not about anything. It's about, it doesn't work anymore. It's like being in a job, you know, that makes you unhappy. You can't stay. It's not good for you. It's not good for your soul. Mm. How old are you boys? They're 12. They're 12, mashallah. They're twins. And they fully understand when you talk to them about oh, yeah. how things are now. They are yes. very much coherent, so, I'm sure. <clears throat> I, I got divorced when they were two and a half years old. When they were two and a half. Mm -hmm. All right. Forgive me. I thought it was something a lot more recent. Than, no, than no, 10 no. Years ago. no, no. Two and a half. Um, they were really young. Okay. But it's fine. I was a single mom. I took care of them. Um, twins, it wasn't easy. Uh, but I loved the journey. And it made me stronger. Just like me getting into climbing made me stronger and resilient to things. This also taught me a lot, you know. Um, again, you know, a lot of people, but it's twins. How, how can you do twins, you know? It is what I know, you know. Like, I, it's the same thing with, with being a mother of, to people as a single mother. It's what I know, you know, that's what I know. I'm, you know, I'm putting in my head that I just have to make it happen, not dwell on why is this happening? Why is this, why isn't, no, just, you know, challenge your, take the challenge, accept it and enjoy the ride. So throughout this, since they were two and a half years old, I always took them as adults. Um, I had to, cause I travel a lot. So they had to be uh, very, independent for my sanity too you know i they're twins two people two kids toddlers you know what am i going to do so i had to talk to them i had to tell them listen you're adults i can be i believe in yourself so i they grew up being that person you know so they're very independent they understand things you know kids understand by the way especially nowadays you know i i remember when i was young i used to understand things and my parents thought i was just a child but no i understand things so it's, I think, very important to talk to kids and treat them as adults. They will start developing also that um, that personality of, yeah, I'm confident, you know, because I feel like an adult. And an adult respects my opinion and adults actually talk to me and listens to what I, my needs. So that's, that's something important, I feel. Especially when they see that their parent believes in them yes. and speaks to them as an adult that self-belief pushes them to be better than the average 
hundred percent. You know, I have the backing of my parent. You know, yes. my parent believes in me. So if they believe in me, I believe in myself. Hundred percent. I my kids, I take them as my best friends. I tell them everything. You know, when I cry, I I cry in front of them. I I become vulnerable in front of them. I talk to them. They they're you know, they give me their shoulder to cry on, and it's fine. You I know, love that. yeah. Just want to go back to when you said that you had to raise your kids on your own at the age of two and a half onwards. One of my favorite verses in the Quran is that God will not give you more than you can handle. And when you hear that verse, it almost gives you like a superpower to feel that I can get through anything. In of life. course. If, if, if God said that he will never give me more than I can handle. And and he didn't give you more than you can no. handle because <laughs> you killed it because you did it for the past ten years and look at the smile on your face and I think that without that you wouldn't be as strong as you are mentally, of course, or even physically in your rock climbing. Hundred percent. I mean, I what you said is so nice. You know, like for me now, I'm gonna use that. <laughs> you know, when I talk to people, um, yeah, I always believe like everything happens for a reason 100 percent. there is no um, no coincidences um it happened uh maybe i can actually be a bit more transparent about something um so when i got pregnant i didn't know that i was going to get pregnant with twins and i was not too happy about having twins when i found out and i actually and i have no like i, I would just say it out loud you know uh i was actually thinking of not you know Aborting one, let's say it's you know I'm yeah. I'm pro this you know if, if something doesn't serve me, I, too much on your plate having to. I couldn't. I I didn't know what to do. So I was actually I decided one is enough. I can't. I can't. It's not me. You know I don't know what to do. I'll have another one eventually. Um, but then eventually I I I didn't do it. You know you know the mother in me when I heard the heartbeat as usual you know you start crying and you're like I can't do this. And I was like, oh my God, but what am I going to do? You know, I was married and, um, but still, you know, it's not something I ever imagined myself to have twins, you know, it was me and my brother in the house when we were kids. And that was like a lot. <laughs> so imagine having twins. And I always thought there will be a gap between two kids. But then I was like, you know what? Okay, you know, let's go with it. And then when I got divorced, I kind of understood why. God made me have twins because God knew I was going to get divorced and God knew maybe it's going to take me a while until I get married again. Wow. So in a way, I actually had twins because I don't have to feel that rush to get married just to have kids. And you know what I mean? And it's fine. If it happens, it happens. It doesn't happen. It's still fine. You don't, you're not pressured because of time or because, you know, you want to... I, and that for me, that was the thing that actually taught me that even if something bad happens or something good happens or whatever happens, it was happen it happened for a reason. There is a reason I might not know now, I will know eventually. And and that's how I see things. Yeah, I could be very negative sometimes, but and I could very I could go down, by the way. It's like What do you mean go down? Like really emotionally oh. get okay feel down yeah, and yeah, yeah. you know yeah, but yes yes I mean I mean it's all of us it's this it's is normal this is I mean normal. we can't say we're always I was super happy. down today at some point like really like I yeah, was about to punch a wall it's it happens but then you realize after you know it all passes after a day two days three days a month it wasn't important and then you realize this happened because of that that and it gave you something there's always something positive there's never whatever negative we see now you'll realize there's always a positive outcome. It's the way to look at it. The way to look at it. Even though at that moment, you're like, I am, I feel it. I know it's something positive, but you can't see it. You know, like, oh, okay, I'm so down. I'm going to dwell. It's fine. Let me go mm. through it. But then, you know, eventually it's something good. I'll give you another one. Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. It's 100%. It's all in the head. Yeah. It's the reaction is definitely just your brain. Your brain tells you something and you believe it. And again, it's like in rock climbing, you know, your brain tells you something and you believe it and you can't perform. So it's all in the brain, but it's always positive. Thanks for sharing uh, what you just shared a few minutes ago. It was very courageous of you. And um, 
it just it's a testament to how honest and transparent you are as a person and it's very rare so i appreciate you sharing such a personal topic uh with me honestly <laughs> okay thanks and my audience <laughs> would you entertain the idea of getting married again yeah why not if there's yeah sure um i'm not Again, it's not something that I am, you know, desperately looking for. Um, but marriage itself, uh, I, I think it's a beautiful thing. Just like being in a relationship is a beautiful thing. I, yeah. I'm, I'm pro everything, you know. Uh, but marriage has something, you know, because it's not only about you and that person, but it's also you, the person, the family. The, it's, it's something I, I appreciate more, and you know, so. It's nice. A lot of facets to it, absolutely. <laughs> Besides um, the fear of being on a mountain and climbing and the worst happening, do you have a worst fear outside the realm of rock climbing? Um, yeah. You'll be, you'll laugh when I tell you that, even though I do it a lot. I'll try to restrain myself. <laughs> fear of flying on a plane. <laughs> Even with all the flying that you do, yes, I, I, yeah, like I try, I try to stay as calm as possible. But deep inside me, I'm like shouting, "The plane is gonna fall!" Because we have no control when we're in the air. Exactly. Like I always have to be on a window seat to make sure there's no fire coming out of the engine. It's, but yeah, I, 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 I freak out on a plane, hundred percent. And people are like, "What?" You know, like you're a rock climber. You should, it's like, no, I'm not scared of rock climbing. Yes, it has its thing. Yes, it has that nice fear, you know, where it has just enough fear to make you want to stay safe, which is very important. Like you have a hand on the edge. Exactly. It, it makes you more aware and more conscious. But plain and just like <laughs> heart attack, every, mini heart attacks every time, mini heart attacks after episode after episode after every bump you know like it's the turbulence. turbulence that gets you oh 100 percent. take off as well no take off i'm fine i put music on and i'm good okay but once the turbulence happens like i can't even put music and and try to zone out i'm just need to take off everything and focus on every move you know like just go with the flow and just yeah. you know not the best feeling. Psychology says that if you are able to see in front of you in a plane, some Instagram psychology page that I was reading, if you could see in front of you, it would eliminate 70% of the fears we have of flying. The thing is, we don't know what's in front of us. And that doesn't help at all. And it's you know pitch black at night, and then you feel turbulence, and you don't know what's oh, happening, yes. and you're not in control, and you can't see. It's like being blindfolded and being thrown into something. I know, I know. But we I all know. do it. I always fear like the plane is just going to break into yeah, two. Yeah, yeah. That's it, <laughs> you know. So yeah, or it just goes down and that's it, you know. Yeah. It's uh. it's really a, a fascinating thing. I mean, even when you're on the ground and, you know, look at a piece of metal flying and I'm like, you know, there's two or three hundred people on that plane. How is it going that fast? You know, it's really, I marvel. I know. At planes in the air and it's so normal. Yet it's just so high risk, I feel. It is, it is. Uh, and yeah, and we do it a lot, you know, like I, again, I travel a lot. And sometimes I try to make myself feel more comfortable by looking at the, you know, the screen of all the flights that will depart mm -hmm. and arrive and make, see, there's so many ha flights happening in one second and nothing is happening. You oh, didn't you, hear you have it bad, huh? Oh, yeah. You, you, you go to that level. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not getting better with time? No. <laughs> Lately, I'm very lucky that I haven't been feeling the turbulence. So okay. that's the only thing that's keeping me okay. But the moment we have turbulence, it's like, that's it. That's my last uh, my last flight ever as I'm dying now. Not because I'm never going to fly. It's just because I'm dying. Can I tell you what helped me with my fear of flying? Skydiving. Would you change anything about your life if you were to be born again? Mm, yes and no. Um, I think most part, most of it, I won't because it is still who I am right now, regardless if it's good or bad. But um, 
Yeah, I would change some things. I, I, I think I would want, I would want to have a conversation with myself. Yes. At what age? Three, four, that young. What would you tell her? I would just tell her not to be too hard on yourself. You know, like um, life will move on. You'll go through a lot of experiences and you should enjoy everything, the good, the bad, just enjoy it. You will grow and you will be strong and everything is okay. So not to take people like, a lot of people are being the child molded, what is okay, what is not okay. And I think it is fine. I think us as parents is our job to kind of protect our our kids or even not even schools to protect our the children and everything. And so we are always used to telling people, you know, kids do this, don't do that. But then if you are not like that or you do something not like that, you start feeling like maybe you're not the the best person. And this is wrong because eventually you grow and you're like, no, this is, you know, it's just who I am. You know, you don't like it and not my problem. It's your problem. So I think it would be nice to have that kind of a conversation. Just, you know, enjoy life the way it is and just do the choices and don't ask for too many um, advices. Make your own mistakes. Yeah. Any regrets, Yasmin? Do you carry any regrets? Um, yeah, I do. I think everyone does. It's normal. We're humans. We we carry regrets. We shouldn't carry regrets, but we do. Um, we hurt people through time, you know, just hurt people by saying things. Uh, um, and at the same time, um, we let people, we allow people to hurt us regardless how it is. So um, I wish this wouldn't have happened, you know, not allow people to hurt you and at the same time not hurt people. Yeah, that's one of my biggest regrets. Do you dwell on it a lot? Do you think about it? No, not anymore. You know, I, I passed that stage. But yeah, there is a time where I feel guilty. And then I realize just part of, you know, being human, you forgive yourself, you forgive others. I, I try, it's mainly forgiving others more than, you know, because it's easy for you to talk to someone and say, I'm so sorry if I hurt you, if I said something that I didn't mean. But it's usually the other way around, you know, that you really take it and, you know, you, you go through anger. And I don't think it's worth it. I believe in the end that every person has a very good part. And if someone hurts you, I'm sure... In a way, they never wanted to hurt you. I don't think there's anyone in this world that really are, is doing it deliberately. You know, just, I want to hurt that person. In their head, probably, they're like, they're very sorry, but they don't know how to say sorry. They're embarrassed. They're scared. They're nervous. But the Arias means some narcissists out there. Yes, they are. But I know it's still deep inside. They are because there's an issue. There's a problem that they, mostly that happened throughout their childhood. So in a way, they they want to feel safe and secure, and it comes out in a very negative way. But they don't see it as negative. And it's almost like they they were a product of their environment. Yeah. So I don't blame them. You know, yeah. I wish they can they can learn from it. I wish they can change. I wish they can and seek yeah. help. Yeah. And I think that only happens when you want to start figuring yourself out or try to understand yourself. And this comes by time. I yeah, think. Totally. If there was a billboard that the whole country or the region or the world can see, a billboard like the ones you see on Times Square, that the whole world can read on a message that you would put up there for 24 hours, what would that message be? Love everyone. Just love everyone. Uh, share love. Um, it's beautiful. That we are a bubble of love which is positive energy for everyone, which is part of, you know, what God represents, which is love and nur, energy and energy. And for me, I, I believe that love is energy, is a form of positive energy. What is love? If you say, what is love? It's just making someone feel good. You share, you give good, positive, and you receive positive. And it makes you feel all, you know, inside all you know warm and fuzzy exactly because of all the energy so i think it just it's a beautiful message i mean yeah. with that message you avoid wars yeah 
you avoid uh, bullying you uh, everyone is a friend it's almost like almost like the perfect world that exactly and you connect with god more if you, you believe in god, god yeah you you connect with god the universe yeah. what's next for you in your uh, quest through the challenges of rock climbing and being the mother of the two twin boys what is next for yasmin from here okay um i really hope i can stay in this field regardless in what form like i as i said i i am a climber um i'm also managing the sport in the country and i am working on developing the sport in the country and focusing on children so which is the future so this is the future i see you know i want my kids to be good climbers uh if they don't want to, it's fine no pressure but i'm hoping like you know so who am i what is you know where do i see myself in the future i a mother of climbers and supporting them if they want to or any other sport but also try to make climbing in Saudi Arabia, you know, the best sport ever. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to be a climber. That's my that's that's my dream. That's I where that. I want to be. But at the same time, also focus on myself. I love traveling. I love seeing other countries, new countries. Um, so travel more, you know. Somewhere you want to go? Yeah. Somewhere on your list that you haven't been to? Yeah, uh, actually. Please say the one. Please say it's the country I have in mind. Actually, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> so for winter sport, which I love doing, uh, I would love to go to Finland. Yeah, no, not, not far. I was thinking Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> Finland, Finland, huh? Finland, yeah. yeah. And for rock climbing, as you know, going rock climbing and also seeing a country, uh, visiting countries. It's actually three countries and together that it's a trip that I want to do and actually in a way I want to do it, it's very different. I'll tell you right now about it, but I want to go to Vietnam, Cambodia and Laos wow. and climb Asia. around. Okay. Yeah, all these three countries together. Are they known for climbing yes. locations? But how I want to do it is I want to go hitchhiking. So I want to go throughout, you know, around these these countries okay. and crossing the borders hitchhiking. The, the, you're quite daring. I want to do it. I want to see if I can do it. I think I can do it. I mean, yeah, I I want to do it. <laughs> it's going to happen. <laughs> I've seen Broke Down Palace. <laughs> okay. And maybe you should watch that. Movie. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Interesting. You, there's something about you that. that and I don't want to do I'm, it in any I'm other country. I'm going to be following your story. I don't want to do it in any other country. Please I've be decided, careful. Yeah, don't worry. Take I'll, a I'll, bodyguard. I'll, yeah, I'll definitely have someone. I'm not going to do it solo. Net. I'm not going to do it solo because, yeah, I, I yeah. still love my, you yeah. know, I ha have kids okay. and I have to take care of myself right. and all that. But I definitely want to do it with, with whoever. Whoever wants to is up for the challenge. Amazing. Uh, but it's these countries, I don't know why. I was like, you know what? I want to do it hitchhiking. Yeah. If I need to take a boat to go from one place by just, you know, hitchhiking and asking for that, please, I'm not going to pay for transportation. And wow. I want to see if I can do it or not. I've never heard of such a story. Someone wanting to do something <laughs> like that. That's amazing. That really, really is cool. Um, I'll definitely be watching. Document it. And come back alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, just have a support vehicle or a support person 100%. with you. Amazing. Um, I am out of bullet points and questions and I've spoken to you about everything I plan to speak to you on. I want to thank you so much for opening up on things that you opened up on. Like, really, it's uh, been very informative. Um, I appreciate your storytelling, your adventures, your accomplishments. I loved hearing everything about it. I, feel, I, I know you so well now. Thank you. And I hope uh, the viewers got a chance to know you as well. I hope so, yeah. Uh, I'm so happy to, to be able to share things about me, you know, just talk. Is there something you want to leave us with before we wrap up? Um, I loved our conversation, by the way. Yeah? It was, it was, it was just so organic. That's good. Um, what do I want to keep, you know, just... Uh, always watch the show, listen to it. I think <laughs> I do, I do. Um, I thought you were going to be like, 
for those who want to go rock climbing, you know, don't think twice about it. Just go. <laughs> no, I. Thanks for that. Thank honestly, you. honestly, anyone who wants to rock climb, just contact me. I'll try to direct you, or I will I'll put take all you. your details in the information box in YouTube, so people can reach out to you. Yeah, social media challenge. Really, um, and especially <clears throat> people who are not in Saudi, they yeah. should. I want them to come to Saudi and see something different. They're always, you know, in for a surprise. Like, whoa, I didn't know it was like this. Oh, yeah. people are so friendly. Oh, the terrain here. Oh, no, you know, course. the food here. We get that a lot. Oh, yeah. The friendliness. Oh, we didn't know people were so friendly. Yeah. We want that. We all want people to come and rock climb here. Just for the sake of doing it, you know. They'll take beautiful photos, by the mm -hmm. way. <laughs> yeah. Instagram photos. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Instagram moment. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing, Yasmin. Thanks for taking the time. We took a lot of your time tonight. Oh, I loved it. I really appreciate it I'm as well. I'm so happy to be here. We um, we will, you know, do our best. Me, my wife, we'll try to come out with you. Please we'll, do. We'll head up the rock climbing. We we were excited to be here, hear about what you're going to be up to in uh, in the future in the space in your capacity as the, the the head of the rock climbing federation for the Ministry of Sports. And um, again, thank you really for everything that you've shared. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Solidly Such a nice, it. really nice opportunity yeah. and really so much fun. And uh, yeah, I hope I wish you good luck. Thank you so much. I'm going to so need it. No, <laughs> come on. But I really, you know, hope the best. You're a star. Also. Thanks, Yasmin. All the best. Thank you.